Five ordinary people living and working in the Asia Pacific, the world's largest and most diverse region. Their actions will impact the future of life on our planet, and there are millions more like them. This is their story. You wouldn't notice it even if you look carefully, but the Asia Pacific is running an important race. It's a race to phase out a group of chemicals used in industry, agriculture or consumer products. When released to the atmosphere, these chemicals damage the Earth's protective ozone layer. This ozone shield protects all life from the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays. These chemicals are used in refrigerators, air conditioners, firefighting equipment, farming and a range of other products and processes. The industrialised countries have already stopped producing these chemicals. This happened thanks to an international environmental treaty called the Montreal Protocol on Substances that Deplete the Ozone Layer. It was adopted in 1987 in response to the thinning of the ozone layer or the ozone hole discovered two years earlier. The Montreal Protocol sets time-bound measurable targets for managing nearly 100 different chemicals. These are closely tied to economic activity, public health and safety. Therefore, developing countries and economies in transition were given more time to reduce consumption with the same goal of eventually phasing them out. Developing countries were sort of on the sidelines. No doubt they were, some of them were sceptical about whether it is an issue which is driven by the developed countries. But as the scientific evidence came and the impacts of the depletion of the ozone layer were known, which were not only restricted to the skin cancers and a, and a cataract, but uh, were wide ranging in terms of effect on a food production, uh, effect on the immunization system of the human beings, uh, I think developing countries realized that uh, the risk is not only to the developed countries, the risk is also is worldwide. Twenty years on, the Montreal Protocol's implementation has produced tremendous benefits to our health and environment. But it's a bit too early to celebrate. Many challenges remain. Developing countries now have to show they are making good use of the extra time and resources given to them. It is the Asia-Pacific that now produces and consumes most of the world's ozone-depleting substances, or ODS. All production and use of CFCs in developing countries must stop in 2010. But it's easier said than done. The region has tens of thousands of small-scale industries and farms that still use ozone-damaging chemicals. To accomplish the remaining phase-out targets, all of them need to be engaged. In this film, we look at key challenges the Asia-Pacific region faces on the road to 2010. Meeting these challenges would ensure timely compliance of phase-out targets. Clearly, governments alone cannot win this race. Millions of ordinary citizens have to join in. Millions like the five we feature in this film.